Welcome back everyone. A little while ago we opened up the beautifully crafted audio file Next Headphones by Clear. Um, and those were a very specific device for a very specific consumer. They are 100% premium construction and very clearly targeting the upper end of the audio file market. Today we've got something a bit different. We have Clear's Enduro 100 wireless headphones um, and these are just different across the board. Uh, they're, they're Bluetooth, they have a 100 hour battery playback um, which is just astounding based on any other Bluetooth headset that I've used where I'm happy to get like 10 hours or maybe 20. We've got a high res audio cert if you'll notice, the packaging on these is a bit more verbose than the Clear was. The Clear was basically a box that said the name, had a picture of the headphones, and very little else. This has got pictures of people using them. We've got information and specs on the back. Um, looks like it comes with an optional uh, USB to... 3.5 millimeter cable. Uh, so let's see, these are a Bluetooth 5 with NFC, ACC, and Aptex for multimedia. I think that means you can use NFC for pairing, which is not something that I've tried before. These have got 40 millimeter ironless drivers, which seems to be something that Clear absolutely loves. And uh, yeah, that 100 hour battery life, there is a microphone built into these as well which should be interesting. It's not a boom mic of any type like you'd normally see on some of the more communication-focused headsets, but I do anticipate it being a good microphone nonetheless. All right, so these are the Enduro 100s, clearly named after their battery life, and that's on a gold sticker. So, let's see, inside the first packaging we get a sealed, you have to break the seal, black cardboard box with a little bit more information, you know, your Bluetooth logos, copyright 2019 clear, all of that stuff, and, and the barcodes were on the bottom of this. Uh, this is very clearly designed to be showcased in a retail store, not that there's much of that going on in 2021 at this point. All right, so with that, let's get our first look at the Enduro 100. Okay, I'm not upset, but a little bummed. I was kind of anticipating a little more metal in the construction after my experience with the Enduro 100s. These don't feel bad at all. I still have this very plush feeling uh, foam cup. The back's a little less open to air, which means these are probably going to be a bit more on the deadening side when I put them on. Yep, I can't hear nearly as much through the Enduro 100s as I can with the next, which is kind of a thing with some of these audiophile headsets is that they are open-backed and of course these fold down for storage. Alright, so we have dedicated up, down, and then middle buttons. I love buttons. I see the microphone hole. I see what appears to be, I think I've turned these on, probably some sort of power button. I'll check what that is in the manual in just a second. Uh, if that is the power button, I would have liked a red line or something on it. Maybe a green dot, just a or, you know, lightning bolt symbol in the same printing they use for the plus and minus. Anything to tell me what it does. Obviously, I have turned these on accidentally. They appear to be in pairing mode. There's our microphone. A little bit odd, actually, that the microphone is on the left side. Usually, I find the controls tend to go on the right-hand side. That... Almost makes me think that whoever designed these is left-handed. So with that out, let's remove this piece of foam. 
And then we get the charging cable, audio cable, and soft pouch. So we get a very similar pouch to what we got with the next, although this is a felt lined um, fabric. We get a USB type A to type C cable, presumably for charging. And we get a type C to 3.5 millimeter cable for using these as wired headphones on a desk. Um, I do note that this cable is only three pole, not four pole, which means that the microphone's not going to work over it. Um, I do wonder if a four pole cable would allow the microphone to work. And there's no type C to type C, which is a bummer. Um, my phone is type C and presumably I could plug these in with a C to C cable and I will certainly test that when we review them in full. And then I, I guess the only other complaint I have on the cables is the, they're, they're very good material, but this one's gray, um, which I, I guess matches the headphones better. They did a decent color match job here. They appear to be very slightly different shades of this brownish gray, but they are almost identical. Um, I probably would have liked a black cable like this one better, but I don't know. Dealer's choice there, I guess. So then we've got our manual. On the moment, clear, Enduro 100. All right, so I was right. That is, in fact, the power button. Press and hold for two seconds to turn things on. Um, it will automatically go into pairing mode the first time it's per turned on. So charging cable C to A, audio cable C to 3.5. This quick start guide. So this is this button in the middle is just called multifunction button. So the multifunction, press one for play pause, press twice for music next, press three times for previous, press and hold, trigger Siri, iOS devices only. That may also trigger the Google Assistant at this point. We're going to test that. Um, volume buttons, press once to increase by one increment, press and hold to just crank it up or down. Line in connection. You can connect your Enduro 100 to your audio device using the provided C to 3.5 millimeter cable. High res output is only available through the line connection, which I knew. Um, clear USB cable is for Enduro 100 use only. Yeah, I gathered as much. Um, So there's an interesting bit in here about LED behavior, talking about it blinks between red and white. It can tell you the charging levels, it can tell you when the battery is low, it'll tell you when it's in pairing mode, power on, etc. So there's a whole matrix here that tells you what the LEDs do. I like that they include that. And then last we've got our specs, 20 to 40 kilohertz line in, 20 to 20 kilohertz Bluetooth, and that right there is just one more reason for me to not be a huge fan of Bluetooth. All these fancy codecs, and we still don't get more than 20 kilohertz out of it. Um, Bluetooth 5, SSP 1, HFP 1.6, A2DP 1.31, etc. 10 minute charge will give 12 hours of play time, can be fully charged in 3 hours. Cool. Um, 4 dBm Bluetooth transmission power. So I wonder, does any of this come out? It would appear not. I was hoping that it might be relatively simple to replace the battery. 
and it looks like you'd be prying some of this apart and trying to, um, well, maybe if you unscrewed it here, it would come apart. We may take those screws out and take a look and see if it just pops apart. Uh, not that I anticipate the battery on this to be particularly short-lived. At 100 hours per charge, um, that sounds kind of ridiculous that you'd listen to it that long, but a huge impact there is it decreases the number of charge cycles that you put the battery through. And one thing that wears batteries out most quickly is being charged and discharged on a regular basis. So if I, for example, have a battery that's rated for a thousand charge cycles, and I'm just picking a random number for easy math, and I charge it and discharge it once a day, well, I'm going to get a thousand days out of it, which is a little bit over well, a little bit under three years. Now, a 100-hour battery like this, even if I used it 24-7, at least in the beginning, I'm going to get several days of use out of it, which means if I charge it and discharge it only when it's full, instead of three years, I might get nine years. Not that you're going to use it 24-7 either. I mean, eight hours a day would take you... Um, like 13 days to drain the battery so you you get a extended life cycle on the product simply by charging and discharging the battery less and we see that kind of thing um, in electric cars where they reserve capacity for the battery wearing out and they try not to charge the battery to 100 percent every time you've seen laptops that have battery wear leveling software it will not use the battery. Well, we'll get into that in another day. But anyway, so a 100-hour battery is to the benefit of these, even if you don't use them that way, by decreasing how often you fully charge and discharge the battery. And then we get to some warranty stuff, limited warranty, one year etc. It's the same type of stuff that we saw on the next, although it is a shorter warranty. Environmental notice and then our, our high res logos and all of that fun stuff. Um, we didn't get a response graph like we did with the next, so I'm going to ask Clear if I can get one of those for when we do the full review. And then, yeah, these are these are very nice. Um, the retail price on Clear's website is listed at $100. So that's, you know, $1 per hour of playback. Um, that's a little bit more than some of the other Bluetooth headsets like this we've looked at before. But if these work half as well as they look on paper, which I know the review's not live yet, but so far that Clear Next has been the best pair of headphones I've ever listened to. Um, so if these work half as well, then a little bit more money is going to get you a better product. And what I'm really missing there is some of the competition to a headset like this. Um, because at $100, it's still cheaper than some of the Bose or the Microsoft headsets or Apple's new AirPods Max. Um, I don't have one of those to compare. So I, uh, I have to look at these in the context of things that we've looked at before and these may very easily end up king of the hill for Bluetooth headphones. All right. Um, yeah, that's very springy and That metal. That's steel. Not very satisfying. All right. With all that being said, um, I do want to thank Clear for sending these in. So full disclosure, the product was sent into us for review. I would like to thank anyone who helps support Pocketables, either via Patreon or by shopping using our Amazon affiliate links. It is support like that that helps make videos like these possible. 
I'd like to thank Electrix for providing our opening and closing themes. Um, if you do like what you hear there, or actually if you don't, because it was uh, some of my influence on exactly how those sound, check him out. Definitely check his channel out and subscribe. And finally, thank you for watching.